Hello and welcome to the online worship for the Woodbridge group this week. Welcome to you if you are tuning in for the first time or if you are a regular with us. It is good to be worshipping with you this week. My name is Matt and I am the curate here in the Woodbridge group. So we begin our service. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We meet in the presence of God, who knows our needs, hears our cries, feels our pain, and heals our wounds. So let's worship our wonderful God together. How great thou art. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome my 
end, our worship continues with a time of confession. As we bring ourselves to God, fully known and yet fully loved, we know God is a God who loves to forgive and draw us back in. So we say together, Almighty God, we confess that we have sinned against you and against those we love. We have denied your saving presence in our lives and we have grieved your Holy Spirit. Come to us in a fire of your love and set our minds on the things of the Spirit, that we may share his gifts and bear his fruit in love and joy and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we say the collect for the day. Faithful Lord, whose steadfast love never ceases and whose mercies never come to an end, grant us the grace to trust you and to receive the gifts of your love new every morning. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we move on to our next song, which is Oceans. Savior, Spirit, lead me where 
sends out the 72. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs amongst the wolves. Do not take a purse or a bag or sandals and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say peace to this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you stay there eating and drinking whatever they give you for the worker deserves his wages do not move around from house to house when you enter a, when you enter a town and are welcomed eat what is offered to you heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of god has come near to you good morning everyone Shall we pray together? Heavenly Father, may these words be your words and may they help us through our Christian journey every step of the way, today and always, through Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I was at New Wine uh, a few years ago and um, I don't know if you know what New Wine is. It's a, a, a large, big Christian festival and there's lots of speakers and there's music and camping and um, it, it's really good. You get the best speakers from all over the world. And I was listening, I was there and I was listening to um, different talks and they, and they were all great. Uh, but one of the days there were lots of talks from military people and having a military connection myself, I thought it would be really nice to go and listen to it listen to the different speakers and there were different officers of, of, of the army etc getting up and saying things that were you know really inspiring and really powerful but one person one person really struck me and i'll tell you about that now, now he was a young lad and he hadn't been in the army long not long at all he didn't seem he did not seem all that confident he didn't seem as though he wasn't it was natural for, to him to stand up and talk and to be honest, he, he just stood there nervously for a while. Uh, and you could tell he wasn't used to public speaking at all or speaking in front of a, 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 anyone. And he apologised. The first thing he did was apologise for not being very confident and not, not being that good a speaker. Uh, and he, he looked awkward. 
And he talked about when he first joined the army. Uh, not long after he first joined, he was posted to Afghanistan. And he'd been posted with a group of other young soldiers. And they all seemed confident and outgoing when they were going to Afghanistan. But on the evening before they had to go out onto the front line, the, the whole mood changed. Um, and they were really nervous and really apprehensive. And, you know, they had to face enemy fire the next day. And these were all sort of relatively new soldiers. And they were all together talking about the next day and how they felt. Now, this young soldier, this young nervous soldier was a Christian. And because of the situation, he really wanted desperately to share the hope of Jesus with them, to share his faith with them. So, so it would give them some kind of hope um, and, and make them feel a bit better. Because there was a real dark cloud, as you can imagine, a real dark cloud over them because of, they were literally going into the firing line. But hang on a minute. I mean, this was a, a, he was saying, you know, he was a, a really nervous soldier and he didn't really want to be laughed at because that would make the whole thing. It was hard enough as it was to do what he was doing and be amongst confident, um, other confident soldiers. And, you know, he, or worse, he, he didn't want to be ridiculed. Or what if suddenly everyone went quiet and focused on him? You know, what if, what if he made the whole, uh, whole difficult situation worse? So he said nothing. But that didn't sit right with him, as you can imagine. So later he prayed about it. And he really wanted to bring Jesus to them in some way. So later on, again, he had an idea after he'd prayed. And he wrote different little Bible verses on scraps of paper. And very carefully, he put each one into the pocket of each of the soldiers. The next day, as you can imagine, or we, we, we try to imagine how difficult that day was for them, exposed to different explosions and gunfire. And they got back at the end of the day, shaking and exhausted. Uh, and they all grouped together. And one of the soldiers asked him as he pulled the Bible passage, the Bible verse out of his pocket. Did you give me this Bible verse? And the young soldier nervously waited and said, yes. And without looking at that piece of scrap piece of paper with the Bible verse, he said what it said on that piece of the paper. He repeated it. He didn't even look at what was on that paper. And then each of the soldiers stepped forward and said what was on their piece of paper. They'd memorized it. They didn't even have to pull it out of their pocket and look at it. And he just said that. And then he, he, said, he, he said, okay, I did what I wanted to do. And he sat down and I thought, wow, and that hit me more than the people that got up with loads of confidence and had some really inspiring. That really made a difference to me. First of all, what a heart for Jesus this soldier had. This is a person who knows Jesus. Not somebody who was a really confident speaker, not somebody who has a degree in theology, you know, or is even at all that confident. This is a young man whose love overcame his fear. And Jesus looks for that kind of heart. He can use that kind of heart. In, verse, in Luke chapter 10, verse 1, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. So 72 people. Why, why did he choose those 72 people? What, what was it about them? Was it because they were all qualified people? Was it because they all had great CVs? Was it because they had um, all these past exams and qualifications in public speaking, in scripture? Was it because they um, were just used to getting up and speaking publicly with confidence? Did they, did they have a checklist that Jesus had for them to do? No, it was because they had a heart for Jesus. And he can use that kind of heart. 
I mean, these were average, everyday individuals, just like you or me. But to them, Jesus was a priority, like that soldier. Jesus had a plan for them because he could use them, a part to play because they truly followed him. And if we have a heart for Jesus, then we will have a part to play. The church is not a spectator sport. Christianity is not a spectator sport. We have a part to play. You know, uh, I'm sure that a lot of you are football fans or rugby fans, and you have someone in the middle of it all playing all these parts. Uh, all the action is in the middle and everybody else is on the outside watching all this action in the middle. And they're either cheering or they're booing, but they're sat there or stood there watching other people do everything. Well, the church is not like that. Christianity is not like that. We are all in ministry, all of us. We all have a part to play. Now, all you lovely people out there, you have something to offer. You have something about you, maybe a gift or a talent that is better than other people that you can offer up to your, for your faith to the church. Jesus is sending us out because we have a heart for him and Jesus can use that kind of heart. We can all, believe it or not, we can all proclaim the gospel. We all have a story to tell. We all have a heart for Jesus. And if we haven't, well, we can learn. We can find it. We can ask Jesus. We can ask others. Because really, it, it will soon become obvious if we try and tell others about Jesus and we don't have a heart for him. We won't have that fire, pa passion. We won't have that fire. It won't be real. And it'd be very limited. If it isn't good news to us, it won't be good news to others. If we know all the stories of the Bible, if we know the Bible chapter and verse and we can quote it, if we can perform miracles or prophesy, say some amazing things, then that's great. But that alone isn't going to bring people to Christ. No, it's our unity our love, our behaviour, our heart for Jesus, which makes the difference to people. The other things will underline what we're saying. The other things are really important, but they will signpost people to the kingdom. The first thing is our heart. Where is our heart at? And the Spirit uses what we say from our heart. The simple truth because that, in essence, is what it is. We tell people the simple truth. There's no trick to it. We don't need a theological degree. We don't need to be even confident like that soldier. It can be a scary thing, but the spirit can use it. Just a few words, just, um, just showing our love in one way or another, like the soldier used those in a really imaginative way of just writing on scraps of paper. And maybe God gave him that idea because he prayed. Maybe we should pray about it more. But it doesn't have to be standing up and saying to people, standing up the front and saying to people, although that is really great and that's really important. It can be something different. We can proclaim the gospel in different ways. But we cannot proclaim the gospel, ordinary people like us. And if we can't do great things, then we do great things in a small way. And be ready, this is really important, because if we have a heart for Jesus, then those opportunities will arise. He will let us know, and we need to be ready. And this can happen at any time, at any, anywhere, believe me, anywhere at any time. And it can be on the bus stop, it can be in the supermarket, it can be over coffee with a friend, it can be in your lounge, it can be outside, it can be in a park, it can be in a pub, literally any hairdressers, anywhere. But how wonderful to, to feel used by God. How wonderful to be useful to Jesus. It gives us a, a, a sense of honour, really, doesn't it? A purpose. He's including us in the most important job in the world. 
and that's rescuing souls. Verse two, he told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. It says here, ask the Lord of the harvest. So asking is praying, basically. So we need to lay that foundation in prayer. Prayer is so important to everything. It needs to be at the root of everything we do. That communication with God, keeping that line open so we can talk to God, God can talk to us. And then he can use us so much more. And we'll feel so much better at what we do. The harvest is plentiful, it says here in this verse. The harvest is plentiful. Hmm, doesn't really feel like that, does it? It's easy to think, you know, when you look at church numbers uh, and you look at sort of at, you know, half empty churches in the Church of England and church, and church attendance being what it is, it's, it's really discouraging, isn't it? I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, how many people are there out in our villages? And how many people, I'm not talking about now during COVID, of course they're gonna be empty, but normally, how many people are in our village and how many people are in our churches? Can be soul destroying, can't it? Oh, and you can think, you know, what's the point? What is the point? You know, what's the point in starting this? What's the point in organizing this? What's the point in putting ourselves through all this hard work? What, what for? Is it, gonna, is it gonna be a non-starter? And it does make us feel like we wanna give up before we even start. But remember, this is, this is really important. Remember all the testimonies that you've listened to along the way on your Christian journey. Remember all the, I mean, look at all of the books that have been written. I, I, Christians will tell you whatever field they're in, you know, prisons, about people who've really turned their life around. I mean, I've listened to um, uh, many, many testimonies through different things. Uh, you know, there's, there's been one that, that was one of the Cratering's twins gang, and he got up and he talked about his, how he turned his awful life around uh, and he, he was at this rock bottom in his cell and he prayed, please God help me. And it, it changed his life. Now that's the sort of thing we're focusing on. We're changing lives, we're changing souls. We're giving people a second chance. It is not bums on seats. It's easy to get swept along and think that way. Billy Graham, one of my favorites, who is someone who always preached the gospel really simply, said, I have seen tough, rough, hardened men open their hearts by faith, receive Christ as saviour and become gentle, patient, merciful gentlemen. It's about people. That's what we want. That's the change we want to say. That's what we're fighting for. That's what we're sent out to do. Verse three, go. I am sending you out like lambs amongst wolves. Now, I've no doubt the 72 people came across some really dangerous wolves. I mean, it was, it was a very, very difficult time and different atmosphere. Uh, and they came across some, some really dangerous wolves. And I'm sure that, you know, that they did suffer loss. And I'm sure that, uh, you know, there were those that took massive risks and, and even lost their lives. But I think with us, there's a misunderstanding about wolves and what and who wolves are. And it's almost been an excuse sometimes uh, to, to just not open our mouths at all. You know, I, 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 I will you know, confess to you, I do it myself, uh, so I'm no different. There's an opportunity to talk, talk to someone or someone challenges you, uh, someone, someone challenges me, and I think, do you know what, if I say anything, they're just gonna laugh. This is gonna change the whole atmosphere of everything. This is just, this is not gonna work. They're gonna think I'm weird when they, you know, they, they like me at the moment. I'm just gonna just, I can't be bothered to argue. I can't be bothered to discuss. I just don't have the time. I don't have the energy. Or maybe they're gonna think, well, you know, I'm gonna lose them as a friend. They're just gonna move on. Now this is a wolf. This is a wolf of our making, not a real wolf at all. It's not real, we have to fight that fact. We have, to, we have to fight the fact that we're always looking for approval. 
this is such an atmosphere that we're brought up in that there's something in us tells us we must have approval from others. And in a way, that, that's a wolf. And when we come across real wolves, well, all I, what can I say? If we come across real wolves, earth is short, heaven is long. Wolves can also be distractions. So verse four, do not take a purse or a bag or sandals and do not greet anyone on the road. Kind of gives us a sense of urgency really, doesn't it? And there is a sense of urgency. It, it really matters what decisions people make in this world because that will have an influence and an impact on what they do in the next. So we, we, need, we need to be telling people, we really do. Uh, and I think distractions come in lots of forms. This, this world dilutes, time dilutes, being busy dilutes. So many things dilute the message and just, just kind of gently pull us away from what our purpose is and what we're really sent out to do, like the 72. There was a reason why Jesus said that. And that's still the same now. It's still the same. He'd still say the same to us. Don't let life dilute the message. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two. We need each other, absolutely. We need the church. We, we, this was never meant to be a lonely thing. This was never meant to be something that we were individually struggling with. And we, we also need to keep, back on, we keep on track. We need to be kept um, encouraged and focused so that life doesn't dilute us. And then we keep encouraging each other. Just that, that word, just that prayer makes all the difference. And we can't lose our way, and that's so easy to lose our way. We need that prayer support, we need that encouragement. And believe me, there are so many things I couldn't have done without that support, without that encouragement, without those kind words of, of you people, all my Christian friends. You have made a massive difference to me. A encouraging word and encouraging prayers for me. What a difference that has made to me. So I wanna say thank you. We are all sent out by Jesus because we can't fulfill our calling from our comfort zone. So we learn from the example of the 72 and we learn from the example of that young nervous soldier. I know we can do it. I know we can do it together. I know because you have a heart for Jesus and Jesus can really use a heart like that. Amen. Father God, thank you that we find you in the stillness and the quiet places, but also that we find you where there isn't peace and where there is times of difficulty or stress. We pray for the whole Church of Christ. We thank you for our brothers and sisters in Christ and we pray for our ministers and leaders. This week we especially think of Matt as he celebrates his first communion after being priested last week and how special that is to him and I pray that we as a community would support him. We pray for the whole of creation. Lord thank you that the sun rises and sets every day. Thank you for the world that we live in and thank you for one another. We pray for our society as it grapples with COVID and the after effects and the changes in our lifestyle, the changes in the way we celebrate as a church. Pray that you would help guide us into this new way of living. Pray for our leaders, all those in authority, led by the Queen, and for our government and all the decisions that they have to make. And we pray for our community and those that serve in the communities that we live in. We thank you, God, for those who make decisions, but also who mop the floors and everyone in between. And we pray for those who work in the NHS, looking after people and caring for the sick and have been doing continually in spite of all the challenges. 
and we pray for those who are suffering and for those who have lost loved ones and for those who are sad and lonely. Lord, bring them comfort. Thank you, Lord, that we can come to you and bring the things that are heavy on our hearts to you. Amen. And now, as our Saviour, so, uh, we pray in confidence as our Saviour has taught us the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The splendor of the King But all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God! Sing with me how great. Our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Age to age He stands, and time is in His hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. 
Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.